Hi guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Kling from klingmusic.com where I'm here to help you improve your productions and create better music. In this video, we're gonna be going over a couple of ways that you guys can give analog sounds, get analog sounds inside of Serum. There's a reason that analog synths are still popular to this day. You know, they're from 40 and 50 years ago, but we still, a lot of people still use those same synths because it's hard to recreate that digitally but in this video i'm going to give you guys three techniques to actually get close to that analog sound and then i'll be creating two sounds on the spot for you guys so a lead and then i think i'm going to do a pad as well and the sounds that i make in this video and a couple more are going to be available down below on my website cleanmusic.com in the free download section you guys can check that out with that said we're gonna hop straight into it all right so first things first we're gonna go over the easiest way to get that kind of sound and the first one is going to be wave table selection and you might not think a lot of it so here i have loaded default the default wave in serum default saw then there's the mdc ds saw and the juno saw if you guys don't know what those words mean don't worry about it, it doesn't really matter but basically they're all different variations of saw waves so if i actually spread these out but if we look here they're all just a little bit different and then when i play all these back to back they're gonna have small differences but those small differences really make the difference so take a listen You can hear that some of them just have different vibes. So this one right here, this Juno, kind of more nasally and there's less high end than this default saw. Number two is going to be the pitch variation. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what that means. And this is probably the biggest thing, in my opinion, that really separates an analog synth versus a digital synth. So in analog synths, the, the, the pitches, there's a little bit of imperfection. I'm sure you guys have heard that before. The analog synths have a little bit of imperfection. And then what we're gonna do is actually create that imperfection on purpose. And there's a couple of ways that we could do this. The first way is using LFOs. And the second way is using the chaos. So if, if you guys have ever went to the global section inside of Serum, you guys were just messing around. The chaos is just going to randomly put it in different spots. And that's great for these analog sounds. So for the LFO method, we can go to the digital, then we'll go bottle blow. And then what I like to do is load in a little bit of a shape in the LFO. So we could do wavetable B to LFO, then that shape of oscillator B, which is kind of like a sine wave. We could definitely load up a standard sine wave, but I like to give it just a little bit of, kind of just a little bit going imperfect on that imperfection. So we can drag LFO one onto the fine pitch, drag it back. We could put this into free mode and then take the BPM off. So we're gonna put it around 0.6 Hertz-ish. You guys can hear what it's doing. You guys can see that it's going up on this curve and then back down and then it's just repeating. And then what I like to do is go to the matrix, go to the macro one, drag that into the aux source. And then now we can mix in pretty much how much of the LFO variation we want. Then if we exaggerate that a lot, you guys can hear it. And the main thing here is that it's going really slow. It's not fast. So if we wanted like a vibrato, we would put it on 1 16th like this, drag this onto the fine pitch. We can take it off that phase. And then that would give us a vibrato. But the slower rate here is gonna give us more of that like, it's slowly going in and out. And then it's pretty much the same thing for the chaos. So if we right click on the fine pitch, so right click on that zero, mod, source, then we can go to chaos one. And then if we play it, it's gonna be ridiculous. So we could drag macro one onto the aux source, then go to global, then turn this down to about 0.6-ish, but it's to whatever you like as well. And using both the LFO and chaos are pretty much gonna give you similar results, but it just depends what you like. And the third way is using effects. And if I turn all these effects off right here in this one preset already made, Listen to the before and after. Here's before. Similar to what we were just doing with that saw wave, really simple. But if we turn these back on, listen to this. And when I create the sound, you guys are gonna see what each one of them does one by one, but we're just adding a little bit of chorus, EQ. The EQ is honestly huge, take a listen. And then we're just drowning it in reverb. And I think that's really nice for getting like a little bit of a retro vibe. 
So with all those techniques out of the way, let's make a couple of these sounds real quickly. The first one, we're going to create that lead. First, we can load up any saw wave is going to do. We're going to keep it on one voice of unison, so we're not going to be doing any detuning or anything. One voice of unison just like this. We can throw some noise on here too because that's going to give us a little bit of the analog feel as well because a lot of analog synths have a little bit of noise all, all the time. Just like that. And then now we have to decide, do we want to use the Chaos or LFO? And for this one, I'm going to use the Chaos just because um, just felt like it. So we're going to go Chaos. We can put this rate back to around 1. It's already around there, 0. 0.6. And then let's drag Macro 1 onto there. And we can mix it in. Slow it down a little bit. And since we're making a lead, we can put it in mono, click mono right down here. Legato, because I think we're going to want it to uh, that kind of glady feel. So that's really it for the main settings here. But if we go to the effects, this is where the real magic is going to happen. So first, let's put a little bit of hyper dimension on to get it to make it a little wider. Some distortion, but instead of using like a tube distortion like this, we're going to use bit crush and the favorite my favorite bit crush is down sampling so we can just reset this hold option left click then we're going to mix in some bit crush it kind of makes that high end a little crispy but almost a little, a little too crispy so what we're going to do next is add a little eq we can put on the high pass filter right here or low pass filter right here then i like to keep this little notch right here at 60 percent. i like to keep that because listen to it I like that little notch there because it kind of makes it a little nasally and I think it just sounds really good for this analog type sound. Then after that we can have a compressor before the EQ and let's also add a little bit of that chorus as well because this is going to give it a little bit of that kind of detuned vibe but just kind of puts it back a little bit. And then we can just add some reverb to make it really spacious. And one more thing I forgot, make sure we cut the lows out of there because the noise has a little bit of low end so we can cut the lows out right here. And let's move on to an analog pad. And there are a million things we could do for this, but we're gonna use the same techniques, but in like a little soft vibey pad. So let's do that. Let's load up a sine wave. And then with this, we're gonna add some voices of unison. We're gonna put this one up an octave and let's do a saw wave, same thing, detune it a little bit. And then we're gonna make that just like that. So this one's going to be a zero octave. This one's going to be plus one. Then we can turn on a filter. Let's turn on a filter right here. Route both of these here. Let's turn on some noise. So right now we got this. Simple, you know, filtered out pad. But we're going to add some of the LFO variations here to give it a little bit of that pitch variation. So we could drag this onto the fine pitch. And then let's make this an analog wavetable. We'll just make it this one for right now. And then for the sine wave, we can maybe do this mini bass. I don't know what this is exactly replicating, but it sounds, sounds pretty nice. So we could do that. Then let's add on the LFO to the fine pitch over here, drag it back a little bit, and let's take the BPM off and the rate down. There we go. And then we can shape it a little bit, put a little bit of attack, make it, put the sustain down, put the release like this. Put the LFO on the frequency right here. Put this back. And you guys can see, I'm just kind of dialing it in as I go. Nothing's really permanent, but all these little changes, like for the, for example, the, the envelope on the uh, cutoff right here, that's going to give us a lot of um, just kind of a little bit of movement in the actual sound. And now for the effects, we can make this really simple. We can just add a little bit of chorus. Take the attack back. Then we could add a reverb, low cut the reverb, of course. That's good, maybe cut the lows out of there. Because we don't, we don't want any like rumble or like too much low end. Then we could add some delay as well. And there we go. That's how you're going to be able to get those analog style sounds. It really comes down to what wavetables you're using. And I know it doesn't make the biggest difference, but that's going to be just a step closer to the analog feel. 
Pitch variations are also a great way to get that. I think it's probably the biggest thing in terms of just how it actually sounds out of the uh, synth. Then of course the effects are gonna give it a little bit of a vibe, some chorus, some reverb. That's it for this video. Check out all the other free sounds I have in that analog style uh, for Serum down below for free. You guys can check it out, cleanmusic.com. Click the link below. And with that said, that's it for this video. Have a great day. Peace out.